It is uh, the uh, 24th day of January 2016. I'm in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal just starting up my alternative spiritual practice by protesting against Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy. And I'm noticing that the uh, wayside pulpit, or what I like to refer to as the wayward pulpit, uh, outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal says, Laughter is the shortest distance between two people. Le rire est la distance la plus courte entre deux personnes. So, interesting. Not entirely clear what they're trying to say. But I must say that uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal and the Unitarian Universalist Association have certainly uh, provoked a considerable amount of laughter in myself um, and I expect many many other people who are confronted by the uh, hypocrisy of Unitarian Universalists. Um, I've literally laughed out loud on a fair number of occasions when uh, dealing with Unitarian Universalist hypocrites. In fact uh, on June 1st of 2012, when I opened my email inbox and found in it an uh, arrogant and aggressive cease and desist demand letter uh, addressed to me by the Unitarian Universalist Association's Canadian attorney, Maitre Marc Andre Coulomb, which, uh, amongst other literally laughable accusations, uh, falsely accused me of the archaic criminal act of blasphemous libel for allegedly making uh, unfounded and vicious allegations he affected ministers of the association engaged in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. I, I literally did laugh out loud. It was like so totally ludicrous, so laughable that I burst out laughing, literally. Um, not for too long, you know, <laughs> I didn't go into paroxysms of laughter, um, but I literally laughed reading that letter. It was like so ludicrous. Um, so uh, yes, uh, I guess laughter is the shortest distance between two people, especially when one of them is a outrageous hypocrite. <laughs> oh look, I'm laughing. And, you know, I didn't even like plan that. I just just laughing at my own joke there. Uh, but you know, it's true. I mean, you know, <laughs> basically when you're confronted by an idiot, you know, one of the, uh, one of the uh, responses is to just laugh. <laughs> and believe me, I've, I've laughed a hell of a lot uh, when dealing with uh, Unitarian Universalist idiots, uh, including John Ender. You know, there's some videos of me laughing because John Ender's being a total idiot. Um, so, uh, you know, I could start listing off the names of Unitarian Universalist uh, hypocrites and fools who have caused me to burst out laughing. Uh, but uh, John Inder is one of them. So, uh, anyway, on that theme, we will uh, initiate our second uh, peaceful public protest against Unitarian Universalist uh, injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy of 2016 in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. I did not protest uh, last weekend for various reasons, and I don't protest uh, every weekend. If I have something better to do, I do it. <clears throat> you know, if I have something more interesting and worthwhile to do on a Sunday morning than protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, well then, yeah, I do it. But uh, if it's a quiet Sunday and I you know, don't have anything of particular interest scheduled uh, for the time slot between, uh, let's say, 9.30 and 11.30 on a Sunday morning, well, chances are pretty good I will engage in what I call my Sunday Constitutional, which of course is a play on words in terms of the double meaning of Constitutional. Constitutional obviously refers to the constitution of a country and the various human rights and freedoms that it uh, 
ostensibly guarantees, and I am certainly exercising my constitutionally guaranteed right to engage in peaceful public protest. Oh look, I use that word exercising in here. Um, well, that's the other meaning of constitutional is a brisk walk for exercise purposes. So essentially in engaging in my Sunday constitutional, I'm engaging in a uh, brisk walk for the purposes of not only physical exercise, but uh, exercising my constitutionally guaranteed civil right to protest against Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy, which include, but are by no means limited to, the Unitarian Universalist Association's immoral, unethical, borderline criminal, and quite frankly, that shit crazy, misuse of Canada's blasphemy law in Bill Cosby-style legal bullying that's clearly intended to uh, cover up and hide such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers, to borrow two choice phrases from the uh, two cease and desist demand letters that uh, Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb uh, had me served with. Um, the second cease and desist demand letter was a follow-up to the first because, to my knowledge, I am not guilty of any unfounded and vicious allegations about Unitarian Universalist ministers engaging in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. The uh, few cases that I'd actually blogged about were cases where the uh, Unitarian Universalists in question had actually been charged, tried, and convicted of pedophilia and or rape and had been sentenced to jail terms for their despicable crimes. Uh, and my sources of information, amongst others, were newspaper reports uh, about these convictions. So nothing uh, remotely unfounded about uh, my blog posts about uh, Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell of uh, the Northboro and Westboro Unitarian Universalist congregations. Nothing remotely unfounded about my blog posts about uh, Richard Buell of uh, First Parish Norwell in uh, Massachusetts, who I correctly described as a pedophile rapist because he was convicted of raping uh, preteen girls who were no older than 12 years old at the times that the rapes took place. Um, so uh, nothing, nothing unfounded there. So I wrote back to Major Coulomb in my initial response to his cease and desist demand letter, which, you know, demanded that I take down these allegedly unfounded and vicious uh, blog posts, and I told him what I just said. You know, I, I don't know where there's any unfounded and vicious, you know, allegations. You know, uh, please identify the uh, blog posts that you uh, consider to be, uh, you know, unfounded and vicious. You know, and I'll go have a look and I'll decide what to do. You know, so basically saying, identify exactly which blog post you're talking about because he did not do so in the initial cease and desist demand letter. I know, I'll, I'll have a look at it. I'll decide uh, whether or not uh, they you know, should be taken down or not. Well, Major Cologne, instead of responsibly identifying the blog post that he claimed contained unfound and vicious allegations, the effect that ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape, wrote back to me and very arrogantly said that my claims not to be able to find the blog posts in question were not credible. Essentially calling me a liar, saying, you know, uh, your claim not to be able to find the, you know, allegedly unfound and vicious blog posts uh, are, are untruthful and uh, not believable and essentially lies. <clears throat> so I had to write back to Maitre Kalom and explained to him, well, no, you know, I know where I've blogged about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and rapists. Um, I don't know where the allegedly unfounded blog posts are. You know, uh, the ones that I posted were about people who are actually convicted of rape and sent to jail. So 
where are the uh, allegedly unfounded blog posts? Well, guess what? I never heard from Major Mark Andre Coulomb again. Just doesn't mean to say I haven't sent him a fair number of communications since, demanding that he either cough up his evidence for his false allegations against me, or withdraw them and apologize for bringing them against me. Needless to say, he's done no such thing. He's neither, you know, supported, he's neither provided evidence supporting his bullshit claims, nor has he had the human decency to uh, withdraw them and apologize. And I should add that, you know, this isn't just Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb's failing and refusal. This is uh, failing and refusal on the part of uh, the Reverend Dr. Peter Beyond Belief Morales, UUA administration, which hired Major Cologne to make these false allegations in an efforts to cover up and hide such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by certain Unitarian Universalist ministers. And I can assure you there's more than just uh, Reverend Mac Mitchell who's uh, guilty of pedophilia and or rape when it comes to Unitarian Universalist ministers. There are a number of other cases where Unitarian Universalist ministers have been uh, actually charged, tried, and convicted of sexual abuse of children. Reverend Mac Mitchell is not the only one. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm talking about cases where you actually went to criminal trials and people were found guilty. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, for every case that actually goes to trial and people are actually found guilty, you can be quite sure that there's a certain number of others that, you know, never go to trial, maybe are never even reported to the police. You know, they may be reported internally within the church uh, structure, either locally or at the UUA level or both. Um, but uh, as should be obvious from the uh, UUA's attitude about such things, they, they basically do their very, very best just to cover it up. Um, in fact, speaking of uh, UUA cover-up and uh, denial of child sexual abuse committed by Unitarian Universalist ministers, to say nothing of less serious forms of clergy sexual misconduct committed by Unitarian Universalist ministers, in my efforts to persuade the uh, UUA to formally withdraw its false accusations against me and apologize and tell the truth about Unitarian Universalist uh, pedophiles and rapists. Uh, to say nothing of Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy sexual misconduct more generally. Um, I sent some emails, well not only to Jeannie Corder, but also to her successor, Jim Key. And I actually had one phone call with Jim Key in September of 2013, a few months after he was elected as a UUA moderator. I uh, had about an hour and a half long telephone conversation with uh, UUA moderator Jim Key, which is available on the Emerson Avenger blog. I recorded uh, my side of the conversation on video, so you can hear what I had to say to Jim Key in these videos and you can get a pretty good idea of what he's saying based on you know what I'm saying to him and how I re respond to what he's saying um, and uh, you know I told Jim Key about uh, these cases where Unitarian Universalist ministers had actually been convicted of uh, such despicable crimes pedophilia and rape <coughs> well um, and I also told him the same things in uh, emails that I sent to him well Basically, Jim broke off communication with me, refused to continue any further discussion, um, never did anything to hold anyone accountable for uh, misusing blasphemy, law to hide pedophilia and rape or any of the other false accusations brought against me by the UUA. Uh, essentially just dropped the whole matter. Um, did absolutely nothing to try to resolve the situation. and. Uh, in April of 2014, it came to my attention that uh, as a result of pressure from not only myself but various other advocates for clergy misconduct victims, 
uh, the UUA Board of Trustees had voted during the April UUA Board of Trustees meeting to deliver a second uh, UUA apology for clergy sexual misconduct. Um, at the June 2014 Unitarian Universalist General Assembly in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, for years, I and other people have uh, been demanding that the UUA has to deliver a second apology because the first apology, which was delivered in uh, <coughs> June of 2000, uh, effective, effectively was worthless. You know, it, the apology on the surface, it looked like a pretty good apology, um, but the UUA never lived up to its promise of uh, providing restorative justice to victims of clergy sexual misconduct, nor did it do any real and significant uh, uh, reform of clergy misconduct policies in order to uh, improve you know, how to deal with clergy misconduct uh, over, you know, about a 15-year time span. Um, so, you know, under pressure from UU Safety Net and uh, uh, other Unitarian Universalist uh, advocates for clergy misconduct victims, uh, the UUA Board of Trustees uh, somewhat uh, hastily decided that they would uh, deliver a second apology to victims of clergy sexual misconduct in June 2014. Um, knowing what I knew about Jim Key, how he had basically dropped the ball on dealing responsibly with my concerns about the UUA's misuse of blasphemy law to hide pedophilia and rape, and uh, otherwise showing a, a lack of integrity, um, I expressed my concerns to UU Safety Net uh, before this apology was delivered that, you know, the 